Let's talk about the topic everybody wants to know more about, and that is hybrid Azure Active Directory. So let's do a deep dive on it. At the end of the day, the reason why is so you can manage these apps, whether they're third-party apps, Microsoft apps, on-premises apps, from a centralized repository, Azure Active Directory. One of the main reasons why is so you can have single sign-on to all of those applications, even on-premises applications. Once those apps are integrated, you'll be able to then protect and govern access to those apps. And here you can see some of those different methods to do that. And then use one of my absolute favorite features, and that's conditional access. And here you can see an if-then statement for every time a user goes to authenticate against one of those apps. Now that you know the why, let's get into the how. There's really three different integration scenarios for Azure Active Directory. There's pure cloud identity, which is unlikely in most scenarios, but it exists. There's synchronized identity, and then there's federated identity. Both of those have something that we call Azure Active Directory Connect that synchronizes Windows Server on-premises Active Directory with Azure Active Directory. Federated identity on the far right also uses Active Directory Federation Services, or ADFS. Here's a great flowchart on how do you choose which one. Now, I will tell you from my personal experience, it really depends on what your business outcome is and what you're trying to do. But for most organizations, password hash sync and seamless SSO is going to work just fine. Other organizations, they may want to do pass-through authentication, while some who have very specific requirements may want to use federated services. It's really up to you, but just be aware that there's pros and cons to all of these. Speaking of pros and cons, here's just some of those right now between cloud identity, synchronized, and federated. So take a moment, pause the video, and review this. There's really three methods of authenticating. The first one is password hash sync, which we're syncing a hash of the hash of the password, and you're authenticating against that hash up in the cloud. Pass-through authentication is passing the auth through Azure Active Directory down to Windows Server Active Directory to provide the authentication. And federated authentication is utilizing the user object up in Azure Active Directory, but is actually authenticating through ADFS, Azure Active Directory Federated Services, on premises. I'm a fan of password hash sync because it's really simple. We're synchronizing a hash of the hash of the user's password from Windows Server Active Directory up to Azure Active Directory. And uh, this gives you a lot of capabilities. It gives you single sign-on to your apps, third-party and Microsoft apps, and even on-premises web apps. It gives you a report to see users' credentials that are up for sale on the dark web. It gives you access to things like conditional access. There's no agents required. It works really, really well. All right, the next one is pass-through authentication. This is when I go to sign into an app, it passes that auth through Azure Active Directory and into on-premises Windows Server Active Directory, and then a domain controller then provides that authentication. This still allows me to do things like self-service password reset. It allows me to still use the same password for both cloud and on-prem apps. Um, there's nothing in the DMZ that's required. The password remains on-premises, and it still works with conditional access, all the identity protection features in Azure AD. Uh, this is still a great capability. Personally, I like password hash sync better because it's less complex. But hey, this is something that a lot of folks want to use. So this is what it's all about. One of the best things about hybrid Azure AD is the ability to do seamless single sign-on. So that means my computer that's joined to a Windows Server Active Directory environment, when I have either password hash sync or pass-through authentication enabled, I can also enable seamless SSO. That means I can just have seamless SSO onto any of my third-party web apps or Office 365. That's pretty awesome. I will never be prompted for a username and password. As I mentioned earlier, password hash sync is the simplest of deployments. It's very easy and it works extremely well. But when you start to get into seamless SSO and you start to get to pass through authentication and even all the way down to ADFS and federated, 
Well, it becomes a lot more complex, so you have to be able to design appropriate for that and make sure you understand the pros and cons. Password hash sync and pass-through authentication is what we refer to as managed. And the reasons why you want to do that versus federated is, again, you have less on-premises infrastructure. Uh, ADFS does require quite a bit of infrastructure, but it works well given those requirements you might have to meet. And uh, you still get the same experience, and in some cases, you even get a better user experience. And you get access to other things like smart lockout and conditional access and some other items. Here's some common scenarios on when you might find password hash sync versus pass-through authentication versus federated using ADFS. Probably the biggest difference here for me and my experience has been when a customer of mine wants to use on-premises based smart cards through an on-premises based MFA solution, then we will use ADFS in our federated topology. Other than that, most of the time in my experience, it's been PHS or PTA because those often provide a much better experience and allows us to do a lot of cleanup from the existing environment. There are some gotchas here between password hash sync and pass-through authentication. One of the biggest ones for me personally is pass-through authentication does not load balance the traffic between its agents, which could be a problem for HA and DR. Now, password hash sync in its simplicity doesn't require any agents. And so just something to keep in mind. But go ahead and pause the video, review some of my notes here so you can have some better considerations over which authentication method you might want to choose. I hope this video is helpful for you in understanding hybrid Azure Active Directory topologies. Go out there and read the documentation, lab it up, learn as much as you can. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can be notified whenever I post a new video. And we will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.